Alright mates, how's it going? In today's video, it's chapter 3 and 4 of Beyond the Dark Portal by Aaron Rosenberg and Christy Goldman. So you may need to suspend your disbelief a little bit more than usual in this chapter. You'll know what I mean when we get there. Let's go! Grom Hellscream smashed his axe downward whilst laughing maniacally, but then frowned because he remembered he was attacking thin air rather than a real enemy. Grom? Kargath. The chieftain of the Shattered Hand clan, Kargath Blade Fist, then approached, and the two exchanged pleasantries. Sona's all sent for your clan as well. He's planning something. Don't know what. Doesn't matter. Anything is better than this. These past two years we've done nothing. And why? Because the Alliance defeated us. <laughs> so what? Because the portal was destroyed. Big whoops. Build another one. There has to be someone we can fight. Grom couldn't agree more with that. Orcs were a combative race. At least now, anyway. They needed to constantly own their wits and strengthen their limbs. Otherwise, they grew soft. Which was pretty much why most of the clans had been fighting each other. Grom's clan, the Warsong, had not skirmished against the Shattered Hand specifically. But they had fought against the Thunderlords, the Red Walkers and the Blade Winds. And Grom had bloody loved it at the time. Feeling that same sweet, sweet red haze descend that he always felt when he was murdering fools. But after the fighting, he'd felt empty. Hollow. A bit shit. Orcs should not be killing orcs. The two chieftains then made their way towards the ruins of the Dark Portal, towards the figure standing there, waiting, and Grom continued to consider what had happened to the orcs. Where had they gone wrong? Whose fault was it? Gul'dan's, obviously. Him, his warlocks, and their quest for power. They'd doomed this world, and then the old twat had gone ahead and caused the Horde's defeat on the humans' world as well. But the worst thing he did, as far as Grom was concerned, was order the Warsong clan to stay behind. Should have been there, Grom thought. He could have turned that battle around. However, the Warsong chieftain then shook his head. The past was the past. Blackhand's dead. Juratan's dead. Gul'dan's dead. Doomhammer's captured. Possibly dead. The Dark Portal was destroyed. The Horde was now in a bit of a crap state, really. But perhaps, maybe, thanks to Nazul, some of that was about to change. Welcome. Why have you summoned us? I have news. News and a plan. <laughs> for two years you've hidden away from us. What news could you possibly have? You fell for Gul'dan's coup, then you sulked like a pampered youth. Now you emerge with a skull painted on your face. Not sure I even want to hear this plan of yours. As he said it, Grom heard the pain in his own voice. Despite everything that had happened, despite the words he literally just said, he wanted to be proven wrong. It was just hard to trust advisors these days because all of them thus far had been a bunch of knobs. Nazul then touched the white skull on his face and sighed deeply. Long have I dreamt of death. I've seen him. Spoken with him. I've seen the death of my people and the death of all that I've loved. This image I wear, it honors that. Believe me when I tell you I did not wish to come forth, but I now believe that I owe it to my people to lead them once more. Like you led before. No thanks. How about, instead of following you, I just slice you up here and now, since you love death so much? Before the situation could escalate any further, booming footsteps approached from behind, and an ogre mage appeared. Dentark, what news? I sent you to locate and summon the other clans, yet I only see Shadow Moon Warsong and Shattered Hand here. Where are the rest? Lightning's Blade are on their way, but the Thunderlords and Laughing Skulls weren't interested. Too busy slaughtering each other. <sighs> This is precisely why we need to act. All that work, all we did to forge the Horde is crumbling away. What did you expect would happen while you hid away for two years? We waited for your counsel, but it never came. You abandoned us. I know. There was an awkward silence for a bit, before Dentarg decided he should continue listing which clans were or were not coming for some reason. The Blade Winds will join us, but the Red Walkers won't. They said the Horde is nothing but a memory now. Bunch of dicks. We'll deal with them soon enough, don't worry. What are the bone chewers? Well, the emissary we sent to them, uh, they, they ate him. <laughs> what a surprise. They've grown even wilder since the portal fell. They can't be trusted or controlled. And the White Claw Clan, mostly wiped out by everyone else before the truth about Gul'dan even came to lie. They never hid their sympathy for the Frostwolves. Made them a target. And any who survived are scattered now. Not even really a clan anymore. Nazul felt a shiver of guilt at that. 
The elder shaman had tried to warn Juritan, tried to undo some of the damage he'd inadvertently caused, and look how that worked out. But now was not the time for self-pity and regret. The White Claw clan were one of our oldest and proudest, and now they're clanless savages. Is this what our race is now? I won't have it. We must rebuild. We must renew the bond between all orcs. Only as a united race can we have any hope of survival, of honor, of glory. Grom stared at Nazul for a bit, and then swallowed his pride. Tell us this plan of yours, Nazul. If it's sound, I shall follow. Me too. I cast my word with hell screams. Nazul was a bit taken aback, but then nodded. We will wait until the Lightning's Blade and Bladewind clans arrive, and then we will go to the others. Together. Our people must be united. And what if they refuse still? Then we will persuade them. The grim tone of his voice left no doubt in the others' minds as to what Nazul was implying. And you, Grom, I have another task for you. There's something I need you to find. Just as suspected, the Bone Chewer clan had not been very welcoming when the war songs arrived. Just sort of looked them up and down and started licking their lips. Urken! Urken Skull Splitter! Call off your warriors, or we'll kill every last one of them! Urken raised a severed, chewed arm and just kind of flapped it around a bit. Don't throw your lives away. Don't fight against... <laughs> Don't fight against your own kind when you could instead slaughter humans on Azeroth. At that, the bone chewer chieftain tilted his head and stopped being a weirdo. Azeroth. The portal fell, Hellscream. Or did you forget that? Hurkin then grinned, showing many of his broken, nasty British-looking teeth. You never were allowed to set foot on that other world, were you? Neither were you. But now we get our chance. Nazul says he can open the portal again. However, Hurkin's skull splitter then just started to laugh. Nazul, that withered old shaman. He got us into this mess. And now we should just dance at his command yet again. What do we possibly stand to gain from that? A chance to kill humans. A chance to win glory and honor. Claim new lands. Lands better than all of this. Well, what would we have to do? Two things. First, pledge yourself and your clan to Nazul. Follow his orders. And fight alongside the rest of us. Not against us. Uh, you give us something else to fight and we'll leave the rest of you alone. There'll be foes aplenty, don't you worry. But there is... Something else, Nazul wants. Grom tightened his grip on his axe. He had a feeling this next request wasn't going to go down so well. He wants that. The skull hanging around your neck. Hurkin's skull splitter was indeed wearing a skull on a little necklace, and the following conversation is going to try and explain how the bloody hell that particular skull ended up on Dranor. No, you can't have this. It's not just any skull. It's Gul'dan's skull. That doesn't make any sense. He died on Azeroth. He did. But at least one of his warlocks survived. And on his way out of that doomed forsaken temple, he found Gul'dan's remains. Ripped to shreds. He grabbed his old master's head for some strange unknown reason and took it with him. Looks like Gul'dan got to return to Draenor after all. <laughs> That's dumb. How the hell did you get it? The warrior killed the warlock, took the skull for himself, and I ate that warrior. It's mine now. And I will not part with it. Grom nodded. I understand. Grom's attack came swiftly and out of nowhere. In the book, the axe missed, and there was a whole fight thing for two pages, but what if? Luckily, the magical skull of Gul'dan remained unscathed as Hurkin's body twitched and tumbled to the ground, and Grom stared at it for a bit. Gorfiend had said not to touch it, and although Grom didn't trust the Death Knight, he went ahead and did that, carefully scooping the thing up with a bag instead. Who now speaks for the Bone Chewer clan? Another large orc pushed forward. Me. Tagar Spinebreaker. I lead now. Well, Tagar, I've taken the skull. Question is, will you be joining us? Or joining Hurkin? Tagar hesitated as if that was a difficult choice. Before I answer, I have one question. Why do you follow Nazul Grom Hellscream? He once said yourself, you created all of our troubles. Huh, Tagar's Spinebreaker wasn't as dumb as he looked. It was a good question that deserved an answer. He did create all of our troubles by handing control to the traitor in this bag. 
Gul'dan denied me my chance to slaughter humans on Azeroth before. But now, thanks to his skull, Azul can reopen the portal. Now I will have my chance. And that is some sweet, sweet irony. So the choice is yours, Bone Chewer. Rejoin the Horde, or we slaughter you all.